In this video, we're going to discuss balancing chemical equations. The concept of needing to balance chemical equations comes from the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass states that mass cannot be created or destroyed. So what this means is that when we have a chemical equation, if we talk about the formation of water, for instance, hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water, you'll notice that if we just write all the chemical formulas and we count how much of each element we have, so let's say that we count, we have two hydrogens on the reactant side of the equation, and we have two hydrogens on the product side of the equation, but if we're looking at oxygens, here we have two oxygens on the reactant side, but on the product side we only have one. So this would insinuate that in some manner one atom of oxygen from every oxygen molecule that reacted disappeared into the universe and stopped being oxygen. And that would violate the law of conservation of mass because that would insinuate that the oxygen has been destroyed, which cannot occur. So what we do is we will put coefficients into our balanced chemical equation, and these coefficients will represent the number of these molecules that are required in our recipe of our chemical reaction. So in order to balance the number of oxygens, because I need more on this side, I'm not allowed to add a single oxygen because oxygen free radicals are just, or oxygen atoms, are just not part of this reaction. We don't observe that in the real world. So I would put a coefficient here, which is a multiplier, and that will balance my number of oxygen so that I have the same on each side. But I'm going to have to adjust my count on the hydrogens because now this two, if I have two water molecules and a water is an oxygen bound to two hydrogens where each line represents a covalent bond in this structure, then if I've got two of these, then I must have four hydrogens because this two here means that I have two of these entire units. Now my hydrogens don't balance out and I'm going to have to come to this side of my chemical equation and put a coefficient in front of the hydrogen. That now will change the count of the number of hydrogens. H2 represents this molecule where again the line represents a single bond between the two hydrogen atoms to form a molecule of hydrogen. And this two means that I have two of these, so there are four total hydrogens, which means that now my number of hydrogens on the reactant side and on the product side are equal, and the number of oxygens on my reactant side and on my product side are equal, therefore, the molecule is balanced. Let's do another example. Let's do the example of ethanol, C2H6O, reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. This is a combustion reaction. And if we were to balance this combustion reaction, then we would 
count how many of each element are on each side would be the first step. So there are two carbons on the reactant side and one on the product side. There are six hydrogens on the reactant side and two on the product side. And there are three oxygens on the reactant side and three on the product side. So the first thing that we'll do is usually we'll balance carbons first. And in general, any time that you have an element that's by itself and not in another compound, you're going to balance that element last. So in this case, we'll do oxygen absolutely last. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to balance my carbon. Now, it's important that you put the coefficient in before you change the values that you put here on your counts. Putting a two here means that I'm now going to have two carbons and two times two is four plus one is five oxygens. Next, I'm going to do my hydrogens because we have to save oxygen for last. On the reactant side, there are six hydrogens. On the product side, there's only two. So I'm going to multiply, put a coefficient of three or a multiplier of three in, and that will turn three times two. So that means that I'll have six hydrogens on the product side now. And instead of having five oxygens, I'll have this two times this two makes four. This three times this one makes three. So that is seven oxygens. Now, finally, I'm going to balance the oxygens on this side with the ones on this side. So in order to get seven on both sides, I'm going to put a coefficient of three in front of my O2 molecule. That means that when I multiply this three times this two, I'll get six oxygens. Then if I add this single oxygen from my ethanol, I'll get one more. So six plus seven, or right, six plus one is seven. So I will end up with seven oxygens. So now I have two carbons here on the reactant side, two on the product side, six hydrogens on the reactant side, six on the product side, and seven oxygens on the reactant side, and seven on the product side. So I have a balanced chemical equation.